In IT, we are always striving for 100% uptime, but unfortunately, we're dealing with extremely complex systems, and there's going to be occasions where some of the resources in our environments are not going to be available for our end users. So we need to find ways to talk about how we calculate uptime and availability for our end users. Usually, we are talking about this as a percentage of availability. We'll talk about something being 99.99% .99 available. If you have something that is 99.9999% available, that is six nines. That's an extremely available system. That six nines availability is something almost nobody has. We all strive to be 100%. There's not much, uh, not much room in there for any type of outages or downtime. And usually this term availability is something you have to make sure that everybody is clear about. Does this mean it is available to the end user? Does this mean that the system is up and running? And because there's a third party that's creating a problem and not making this available to our end users, does that count against my availability time. This is an important consideration, especially if this availability number is part of your annual bonus. So you need to be very, very clear about that. And if we look at percentages and how much time we're talking about as an annual downtime, if you are at 99.9999% availability, you have 32 seconds that you can be down during the year. That doesn't give you much time. If there's an outage, it's probably going to be more than 32 seconds long. There's an idea of five nines. Five nines means we can have as much as five minutes and 15 seconds of downtime during the year. And we can go all the way up to 99.0 availability. 99% availability means our systems are still not available 87 hours and 36 minutes during a 12-month period. Whenever there is an outage and we're trying to get things up and running, one of the first questions we get is, what's our time to repair? And if we have an average time that it takes to repair, we usually refer to that as MTTR, mean time to restore, mean time to repair. You'll hear it referred to as similar things, which means if there is an outage of a certain type of system, generally the time that it takes to restore from that will be our MTTR. If we're looking at how long between these failures we might expect, then we're talking about the mean time between failures. And this is very often a prediction. Sometimes failures are completely random. But sometimes we can count on certain types of hardware to always have a certain life expectancy. So we may expect certain systems to go down once every three years, and we may want to take that and apply it into our mean time between failures calculation. If the system is down and we need to get back up and running, then we need to talk about what are our objectives. When we finally get something available, is it when we first make that database available to our applications? Is it we're finally up and running when we make the internet connection available again? So very often, we have to set some objectives for that. And as soon as those objectives are met, we can consider ourselves to be back and available again. When we start looking at detailed calculations, then we may want to also consider what our recovery point objectives might be, which means when we bring this system up and running, is there a particular acceptable amount of data loss, or do we need to go back to our backups and restore from our backups to really be available again? Sometimes this data loss becomes very, very critical. There was very recently an Amazon outage. The Amazon Cloud Service had an outage that lasted a number of days. And because of that, there were organizations that lost data. One of the ones that I used to watch my website told me that they got back up and running, but because the cloud service was unavailable, unfortunately, there are 11 hours of data that are simply unavailable to me now. And so part of their recovery point objectives was to make the service available again, get as much data back as possible. But they had to make a decision for their recovery objectives that said, we're going to get back up and running. But unfortunately, we're not going to provide that last bit of data available to our users. All of these are used in your calculations. And when you're trying to make business decisions about whether you acquire different systems, whether you have backup and availability, you'll take all of these calculations into account and apply them to how much data or how many resources may not be available during a time frame. And then it's a business decision on whether you purchase additional equipment or add additional redundancy to your systems.